You're listening to DraftKings Network. Today's episode is powered by Venmo and PayPal. Look, no matter how your favorite team did this season, there's still one way to feel like a winner, and that's with Venmo and PayPal. That's because you can choose to use Venmo or PayPal to add money to DraftKings in a few taps. You can even transfer your balance if you have one. So the next time you get paid back for dinner, drinks, or tickets to the game, you've got the option to put the money right back into your DraftKings account. Hundreds of millions of people use Venmo and PayPal already, and there's never been a better time to join them. Don't have a Venmo or PayPal account yet? Don't sweat it. Choose your way to pay and download the app to get started. Venmo and PayPal are not valid deposit withdrawal methods in Connecticut or Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Be warned that once you pick up a refreshingly cold drink from McDonald's and people see just how refreshingly cold that drink from McDonald's is, you may create drink envy. Because there are drinks, then there are drinks from McDonald's. For a morning brew that really creates a stir, get any size iced coffee, including caramel and French vanilla, for just 99 cents before 11 a.m. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. ba da ba 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 this is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. I mean, I hate this divorce article. I can hate it. I, oh my, I mean like... It's so long. It's long, but it's like so many twists and turns. And it's, uh, am I reading the right one? Because half of it is her just being like, I'm reading these books about... Yeah, I mean, the, I think the essay got... Uh, the way it got filtered into social media made me think it was going to be different also. And then I read it, it and I was sucks. like, this is just like a, fa- a sad personal essay. Yeah, it would, it's it sucks. About very mentally ill. Like, I feel like I'm reading the wrong thing. No, you're, you're reading the right thing. Because she cheated on her husband. Saw yes, that uh, but she brushed that under yeah, the rug she was so like, quickly. I did it. That's none of your business. And now I can't and, go do yoga but anymore. But also bur- buried it. Like she went so many paragraphs yeah. about how, oh, we're on the wrong page. And he's so career oriented. And I'm over here. What's right? my career also i f- some other guy but that's none of your business this line i just read just like sent me and it it sent me my husband would have to forgive me for cheating and wasting our money i would have to forgive him for treading on my literary territory I, those are not the same thing my god i, I was like the ego that's it's happening here crazy and like raging ego man and i'm not even like i'm like 75 percent of the way through i've been trying to read it it's so tough to get to that paragraph is like Stands out that okay, paragraph okay. where she's I going. Started reading it. He needs to forgive me for this. I need to forgive you guys. For this. You guys have been talking about this for the better part of four hours during every break. What is it that's so fascinating to the three of you about oh. this story? Oh, I haven't finished it yet. It, it is a tough read. I don't think I'm fascinated by it. No, I, uh, I read it. It's a it's another essay in the cut about a woman, and in the first like two paragraphs. She talks about being institutionalized and having like all these mental health issues. But the essay is about her divorce and about like all these things that happened with her and her husband and how she convinced herself she needed a divorce. And it's very long. And and I just. uh, Yeah. So. So basically it's this woman is writing about her relationship with her husband and how uh, she starts upping some uh, antidepressants during a very stressful time that leads to her kind of becoming more and more free with her alcohol uh consumption and that leads to her coming to the conclusion that me and my husband actually don't get along at all we should get divorced and as just said there's a lot of stuff she gets institutionalized at one point and she has to clean up and when she comes out she's off the stuff but she still feels like nope got to go through with this divorce and she's describing these things, and I think in her mind, she thinks it is, you know, the things about, hey, the friction between two beings. Like my dad said, like, marriage is one of the things that goes against every human kind of impulse. There's two impulses that all humans have. This is what my dad says, right? Number one is the need for companionship, the need for someone to share things with, the need, the need to be, uh, you know, in a relationship. But then there's also the need to be individual. I do what I want. No one tells me what to do. I go where I want. I sleep when I want. And so those two things are conflicting at all times. And you got to balance that to be in a marriage, right? For the entirety of the relationship. This woman, the impulses that she's talking about are very different ones. One is, hey, my husband is more successful in his career than I am. And also because of where we are at in our careers, we kind of need him to work a lot 
in order to pay the bills. By the way, this is according to the cut. It wasn't just a kind of cool way of saying we saw this in the cut. It's like actual. The that's website. that's what I thought it was yeah. when you said it. I was like, oh, it's in the cut. Okay. Yeah. Well, why? But why is it something that everyone is now talking about while Jessica's being made sad a couple of paragraphs in because uh, people seem to be chewing on something here as conversation that seems depressing because someone is struggling with love, with antidepressants, with depression. I think because it came out at the same time as the scam article. Yes. yes. On the same platform, too. Yes. It was so, like a, the same day or maybe a day before the scam article in the cut. It happened so close to each other that I confused one for the other. I, I learned of this story from Ethan Strauss, who ha, who potted about it, right? But as soon as he started talking about it, I was like, oh, yeah, the, the thing on TikTok. And so I click on the article thinking, like, it's going to be a nice write-up. And I was like, oh, this is a completely different story. Because this is a woman who was in a relationship for seven years. The TikTok one. The TikTok one's completely. There's so much happening right now, Dan, on the happening. internet. A lot of personal essays in the forms of personal essays. And also in the form of 50-part TikToks that are four hours long. Which was what Lucy was supposed to report yeah, back on about. Uh-huh. And then she watched seven hours of Love is Blind instead. And I'm very disappointed She still needs her. three more hours to go, by the way. I'm feeling so bad. Just in general. I know too much about everybody's business, and normally I like that, but just not all at once. I can't keep track of all these things. <laughs> it is a bit overwhelming, is it not, to try and keep up with all of the content places where people are gossiping about things that you find interesting. I'm like 75% through this article. I don't know if her and her husband are still together or not. I don't know if they got divorced. Read to the end. Did, it, wait. Mind-blowing. What? Mind blowing. I'm not gonna tell you what happens, but read. I'm not gonna end. read it though, so you're gonna have to tell yeah, me. All right. I'll spoil it for you in the it break. Is Don't such worry. Such a long article. It's Spoiler so alert. Should we should we start no. with spoil? No? no, because no. you guys are now talking. You you guys are no, talking about something that a lot of people might not know what you were talking about, and now you're mixing and matching pop culture you're stories. Damn right. I don't Keep know up, what's folks. Going on. Here's the deal, Dan. Uh, what you do when you have these kind of conversations, you try to lead people to the content. I want people to read that thing. I want them to read it and find out the spoiler alert at the end without me spoiling it for them all together. But, yes, the TikTok scam wedding, that one was insane. And this one we will spoil because some are, people... Are we going to spoil this? Because Lucy does not want us to spoil this. Now it's a scam wedding? We... What, what do I not want spoiled? The, the TikTok saga. Wedding. You know what? You can spoil it. I cannot consume all of this content at once. My brain, it is not We haven't even anymore. gotten to Laura and Jeremy yet. We haven't even talked about Laura and Jeremy I haven't yet. even started oh, on Laura yet. man, Jeremy. That guy, red flag. That's not Love that is Jeremy. Blind. That was oh, a oh, segment ago. Yeah, but we had so much more to talk about. This is what it sounds like when I talk about the U.S. Open Cup. That is correct. <laughs> four cups, though. You the four. There are four. Which one them. are we saving again? Yeah, I, 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 Except I, on this one, everyone seems interested. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's interesting. I, it doesn't do anything for me. It's kind of like a... Mike? A, is, a, which one, though? Is Lamar, All of this. Uh, and I have a deep-seated need to be liked by everybody and want to take part in things that are popular, but I nothing just doesn't <laughs> register with me. I don't I don't give a shit. As an aside... You gotta watch Mike, Jimmy. You'd hate him so much that you'd be in. I, it's just like when people tell me my sign, I, I can't retain it. I'm allergic to it. I don't know what it is. Oh, it might be a cancer. I've been called a cancer several times. When's your birthday? <laughs> October 9th. You are not a cancer. Mike, uh, is the Lamar Hunt trophy named after the Lamar Hunt? Yeah, he's got a lot of things named after him. Is, is he the only white Lamar in the history of Lamars? Put it on the poll, please, Juju. It's Headley Lamar. Is uh, Lamar Hunt Headley. the only white Lamar at Levitard show? It's called no, the Full Circle, Daniel. So you've got, no, uh, well, there's more, though, to all three of these things. It's rare, Mike. This is, and I understand why you would feel excluded from this. It's rare that the whole place, popcorn pop, pops over the same three things like where the kernels are popping all over you got the scam you've got the divorce and you've got love is brought these blind. are different things they're all different they things. Late. well there's they're, also there's four things technically because there's the divorce essay oh it's cool i i don't give a shit but i'm the happy that you guys essay, are super passionate love about is blind, it I'm excited. and the tiktok the u.s open cup is like love is blind Wait, it's kind of an institution at this point the, it's been around the longest the tiktok isn't the scam wedding no, oh no. This is a complete, oh There's my, a, a mean, this is completely separate. Now my mind is blown. There's a this is a story. What I <laughs> thought you much. were referring to it was is. a 50 part, I, can't tic, do it I think over 50 part TikTok yeah. series that a woman has been talking about, into her camera about on TikTok about a man that she married and what she found out about him 
after they were married. And it Yo, is a saga. John Reed, you, thank you for bringing the steamer in here. Y'all are funny. First of all, this is an HR violation. <laughs> it's not an right HR. You might this burn is? him if it's actually this plugged in. John Reed is here exactly. with a steamer, with a, 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 a one of these steamers that take the wrinkles out of shirts. Uh, that shirt is I, going to defeat that steamer. This is this is awful. Does it hurt? It is very it's, hot steam uh, coming out of there. I, I feel like a, an animal at the zoo getting getting washed. Is right it now. damp? Is it damp? It's it's not pleasant. I'll say. Jessica, that. you were saying. I have no idea. This uh, there's just a lot of things happening right now, Dan, and clearly none of us can even keep up with. I them can either. keep up. I can keep up. The the one that I thought you were talking about, Jessica, was the one about the woman who married the former pr- professional athlete. Who told her, hey. The CFL player. Yeah. The arena football guy? The arena or, yeah, arena. I know that's what this t- is. That's told her what? Finish the story. No, that's the 50-part one. Finish the story. The finish the story. Well, every time someone that's what that. Lucy was supposed to watch watched... on the elliptical yesterday, and instead she watched Love is Blind. And I didn't work out at all. Okay, what? so, again. <laughs> so, so it's a woman who's talking me. about she got married to a former professional football player. Arena from, League, Arena I League, yes. And what happened was they got married during the pandemic. And they try to buy a house, and then very quickly he scammed her out of all of her money, and she realized very late in the game that he was. He essentially uh, lied about every single thing he ever told her about himself. Everything about himself, including that he has a twin brother. He didn't tell her about that, and the twin brother actually had the life that he was describing to her. Like the prestige. Exactly. <laughs> How are, you get it, Dano? How are scams and lies so in right now? Like, how? Stugatz has never been hotter. It's unbelievable. Stugatz is going to end up being the president of everyone. <laughs> like, it's just, if scams and lies are always going to win, and he's an author who's writing a book without writing anything. The art of the steel. <laughs> Back in my day, scamming was harder. It's too easy now. Anybody can get scammed. Hey, uh, that's the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get your uh, your social security number? You got to give me fifty grand in a box. Hey, hey, Back hey. in the day, you used to have to work for that scam. Like the pizza driver, you used to have to work for that shit. I'm hey. selling these four hundred ninety nine dollars shoes. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, I, I'm broken down by the side of the highway, and I need to fly. I, and my family's in the car too. Can, can I have some money? Can I sell you my jewelry? Can I sell you my jewelry, <laughs> Lucy. Fight the good fight. Which of these stories are you willing to retain? You now have a certain amount of bandwidth that's making you feel disgusting about not being able to be to keep up with the gossip. It's you're overdosing on Scam gossip. With. Yeah. Also, I definitely like gave out my mom's social security number when I was a kid, and we're just talking about this, and it made me. I entered my family in for like so many free cruises, and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna get it. They're gonna show up with a big check." I'd ask my mom for her information; she'd give it to me, and I'd be like, "When this flat screen TV shows up, I everybody's gonna love me." So it was her fault. She should not have trusted would, like a ten year old with that information. Why would an adult give a ten year old their social? Yeah. That's a really great question. I gave out so much of my mom's personal information. Crazy. My family's Catholic. I don't know any of my parents' personal information. <laughs> I don't know my what kids. What does that mean? I don't know my kids' social. <laughs> they don't means, talk about it things. Means she's Catholic. <laughs> Wait a second. I have to say that under a fake contact. <laughs> and there are some times I'm like, I got to be honest, kind of forget the birthday a little bit. So I just go back and I go to this contact. And I'm like, it's not that I forget, but it's just like it reaffirms. Would somebody please put a bow on the six different scams it is and gossips that we're trying to chronicle here? My mom did not get her identity stolen. Shockingly, surprisingly, huge dub for me. And they didn't even get divorced. Well, my mom got divorced to my dad, but the couple didn't get divorced. They're still together. Which couple? That's a good question. Today's episode is powered by Venmo and PayPal. Look, no matter how your favorite team did this season, there's still one way to feel like a winner. And that's with Venmo and PayPal. That's because you can choose to use Venmo or PayPal to add money to DraftKings in a few taps. You can even transfer your balance if you have one. So the next time you get paid back for dinner, drinks, or tickets to the game, you've got the option to put the money right back into your DraftKings account. Hundreds of millions of people use Venmo and PayPal already, and there's never been a better time to join them. Don't have a Venmo or PayPal account yet? Don't sweat it. Choose your way to pay and download the app to get started. Venmo and PayPal are not a valid deposit withdrawal methods in Connecticut or Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Dan Lebatard. You getting started on the breakfast flan? Oh, man. I've been singing a song to myself all morning long. What? Breakfast flan. Stugats. Have you never heard the breakfast flan no, song? No, hit me with it. Okay. 
I wish I had some breakfast flan. Breakfast flan. Where can I find a breakfast like that? This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats. Let's start right there with a beat up Paul Pierce. He's coming in tired. <laughs> He's, I don't know if he's done a lot of media this morning, but he's an NBA champion. He's a Hall oh. of Famer. He's had 19 seasons in the league, and now he's got a new show on DraftKings Network, All the Smoke Productions on YouTube, The Truth Lounge with Paul Pierce. But he runs oh, hard. He lives hard. And so he seems tired this morning. Are you okay? And I'm good. I had a good workout, though. That's what it really was. I got up at 5 a.m., got to the gym. I've been disciplined for the last six months, man, so... Ah, yeah, it was a rough one this morning. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Well, but retirement's hard. making a comeback, though, you know, so (laughs) I'm just getting ready to be okay. (laughs) Okay, because retirement is hard, correct? Like uh, leaving the game and being near the game and creating a career after you've played for 20 years in the game, that transition is a little bit rough, is it not? Yeah, man, it's definitely rough. Since 80% of us get divorced, you know, I've been one of those after retirement. You know, it's rough being a single guy. You know, retired, and, uh, you know, it's rough when you can wake up and do whatever you want, go anywhere you want, uh, date whoever you want. That's rough. <laughs> okay, so you have been, uh, you've liberated. You're a, you're a Hall of Famer. Uh, everybody knows this about you, and now you've started a media career as well. Why are you laughing, I mean? I'm laughing because, man, Paul's my guy, man. And, uh, yeah, that's my man. What's up, I mean? <laughs> What's up, Paul? Uh, man, like. <laughs> Let me, I, I'm going to veer this into a, like a semi-serious part of the conversation, man. Paul, you didn't retire that long ago, right? You, mm-hmm. you are a very newly retired player in my eyes. And a lot of your peers are also newly retired. Yeah. Why is it that in a few short years we've gotten so far away from when y'all played in the All-Star game and took it seriously, at least in the fourth quarter, to where we are now where nobody tries and they tell you, hey, I am not going to try. You know what, man? It happens. Every era is different when we got to understand because even my era was different from the era before. And so, you know, it's it just – and I think a lot of that responsibility has to do with the older guys as we start transitioning to a younger generation. We didn't do a good job with the younger generation, you know, and I think we could have did better. Maybe there was a disconnect or something because, you know, what I learned and what I brought to the NBA, I learned from the OGs from before. And so maybe the social media, maybe, uh, you know, just the, the the popularity or the money or the business of the game has changed it. You know, it's a lot of things that can factor into it too, man. You know, so I can't really put my finger on one thing, but, you know, how are you going to tell a dude who out here making 50 million or a guy who making 20 million off the bench? I mean, I mean, to go out here and play hard in an all-star game when it's supposed to be your time off, you know, it's just really, it's really, and my eyes is the disgrace to the game of basketball that I grew up giving everything I had to it. You know, my competitive spirit to just go out there and watch this game look like this. But uh, I don't know how we get back to where it used to be either. But disgrace, that's a strong word because it upsets you to see them not trying and you feel like an old head because you're coming after a 21-year-old because he wants to be on vacation in the middle of the season. Well, there's over 400 players you know, only 24 of them got to go. So, you know, the rest of them get some rest. And, you know, people pay good money. And this is like, you got to understand, there's there's two parts to the NBA season that people always look forward to. It was the All-Star game. You look forward as a fan. And me being a fan now, I look forward to the All-Star game. And the NBA finals, the playoffs. You know, the regular season, you dip in and out, watch here and there. But them is the two big moments as a fan to where people pay lots of money to fly in. People pay lots of money to to, to get tickets to be part of the weekend. And, and and you just want a little bit more effort out of it. You know, it, it's, it's just you want a little more out of it. Paul, do you, as the one who was coming up and butting up against LeBron James, whose legacy you put up against Dwayne Wade's and say, I'm the same player, when <laughs> you watch LeBron James still doing it, as the oldest player in the league, given however it is you feel physically right now. Do you look yeah. at that and marvel at you can't believe he's still doing it at that age? 
I, I really can't. You know, uh, it, it's a joy to watch, man. And I think us as fans got to really cherish it forever. M many more years LeBron can play at this level. Because I'll tell you one thing, when I was like 34, I was waking up and it was hit or miss if I was going to be ready for the game. And then I'm looking at a dude who's 39. Uh, LeBron is probably the greatest athlete we've ever seen. Just just athlete. We've never seen nobody play at this level at this age. And, uh, yeah, you can say Brady, you know, he played till he was 40-plus, but he didn't have to, to run up and down a court, jump. He still go out there and dunk, guard. You know, he had a, a good line to protect him. So at this, with the physicality and, and – but the athleticism, athleticism he's displaying and still putting up these crazy numbers. And, and, and you say at 39, LeBron, uh, any team you put him on as a contender at the age of 39 is just crazy to hear and, and watch. Does it hurt you to have to say it out loud? Because I don't think you want to give these guys respect even now. <laughs> You know what, man? It ain't even that. I always spoke my truth toward LeBron. And, you know, a lot of people always hear the negative aspect of things when I say things of he ain't this or he ain't that. But people never hear when I say he is this or he is that. You know, when he won that championship for the Lakers, I, I put him up there with Jordan. You know, I even went as far as to say he may be the GOAT all time. And, you know, people don't like – people don't hear that. They hear the, the negative stuff I've said. But we were rivals to me. You know, he brought the best out of me, and I feel like I brought the best out of him. But at the same time, I thank him that I had a chance to uh, match up with him. And now in retirement, you know, what more can I say? I got to give it up to him because I probably wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for him. Have you heard this sound from Udonis Haslam? Surely it's gotten back to you. It's from the OG's podcast. He is saying that still now, if he sees you guys, you and Kevin Garnett anywhere. He, he, well, let's play just play the, the sound. sound. Play the sound, yeah. My, yeah, Let's play We used to hate the motherfuckers that we used to have to go against and the rivalries and all that shit to this day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how I feel when we got to play the Celtics. I can't stand the mother. First of all, and I have nothing against. And I have listen. On, and the crazy thing about it, can I tell I, a story I like about it in the huddle? Man. I like Tatum. And I like Brown. <laughs> I would love for you to tell. Can I tell I a story about it in the huddle, man? What? I, I like Tatum. I like Brown. Nah, the not old this. mother. KG and Paul. I don't uh, with y'all. Y'all know there that. Go. It's cool. There it go. I don't y'all. Y'all know that. It's cool. I'm cool on that. F that. The young generation. Y'all can create y'all own beef, and y'all can create y'all own whatever. The more. Y'all already know. I but, see y'all in the grocery store. It's home. <laughs> yeah, all right, that shit was crazy. And the, I don't care what aisle it is. It could be a 7-Eleven around the motherfucking cheese dip. It's like whatever. All that shit getting flipped over. Man, listen. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Like, And they understand that. I told them that. Like, They know that. I don't with them people. They told you that? He told you that? All right. First of all, I'm trying to remember when he told me that. Because I never remember hearing that. Uh, <laughs> Second of all, when we played Miami, when Udonis Haslam was out there, I don't remember no hard screens, no hard fouls, wow. no spirit talking. And now that we're in retirement trying to get our podcast off, I'm starting to hear this hate, you know. But that's cool. You know, I know I rub people uh, uh, the wrong way. I never liked Miami. I respected them. But uh, it is what it is, you know. I'd rather do it in a, a telephone booth, but if you need more room in a grocery store, that's cool, too. Uh-oh. So, okay. So you, know, just, saying, you, know, you know, I'm a grown man. I ain't dodging nothing, man. People are going to say what they want to say. So, you know, let it be what it is, you know. But, I'm going to be ready for it. Okay, but let's talk about some of those great memories. I don't imagine you have a lot of moments that felt as good as hitting the three in LeBron's face in Miami in Game 5 when LeBron built the team to beat your team. Like, you guys legitimately hated each other because you were playing for the top of the sport. Yeah, absolutely. But it was all about basketball, Dan. I'm going to tell you that because every year when we went to the All-Star game, it was, you know, when we see him, it, you know, it was a little tension, but it was respect. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, Nobody wanted to fight or, or put hands, but we showed that grit that when we was on the court, that was our identity as a Celtics. You know, when we on the court, you know, I don't like you, you don't like me, so what? I ain't picking you up, you fall to the ground. I don't really want to shake your hand. And, and that's what the robbery really was, you, you know? And, and so it looked like that on the court. But to really hate somebody in real life, <clears throat> I hated them as a team. I hated that they formed their team just for us. You know what I'm saying? But... That is a that era of basketball is gone just because we was passionate about winning. We was passionate about uh, playing against the best, and, and that's what I feel like is missing from the game right now. Like what rivalries is really out there? You know, what, what, you don't see people get into it. You don't really see people. It, it's just it's 
it's just another aspect of the game that drew interest toward it. And I, I don't really see that out there no more. You know, when everybody hanging out and shaking hands and that's cool and all, it's a different era, but I like the rivals. And there's somewhat of a rival still with Miami and us, but it, it, it really ain't the same. You know that. Paul, what's your favorite part of retirement? My favorite part of retirement, man, I'm, I'm enjoying my kids, you know, uh, being a father to my kids. I'm enjoying traveling. Uh, I'm enjoying, you know, being in the media, doing things that I uh, didn't know I can do business-wise, you know, because I always played basketball my whole life. Uh, you know, podcast stuff, real estate. I'm in, a, you know, different business ventures. And, uh, you know, I like the time we're, we're in. We get to tell our own story, control our own our own media. And I'm excited about my, my new podcast. I'm coming out with the Truth Lounge. We're launching this Friday. So join us. You know, it's going to be, we're going to address all these issues too. You know, all these issues people got with me. Uh, you know, the wheelchair game, uh, you know, whatever it is. We're going to address lifestyle basketball, but it's going to be all in good and fun, man. Well, uh, help me sell this part of it to the people because the, Dr the Truth Lounge with Paul Pierce, it debuts this Friday on the DraftKings Network, and, and we have, are, in are in partnership now with All the Smoke Productions on an assortment of projects, and this is one of them, and I would imagine, you correct me if I'm wrong, your nickname mm -hmm. is The Truth, and uh, you're ending in... In mainstream media you had a very good job uh mm -hmm. it it was probably it probably felt less honest to you however that ended and i'm wondering if there were lessons in it for you that now birthed this project in a way you could do it a little more you than the way you were doing work before yeah absolutely i mean I, you're gonna get the authentic paul pierce um you know i feel like my ending with <clears throat> espn I, I was I, I think i ended like in february march i think I was, that was gonna be my last year anyway I just feel like I couldn't really express myself like I want to. And with my show, I'm going to be my authentic self. You're going to get the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. And, uh, you know, I, I get to tell my story and get the stories from other different people. Um, I got truth serum coming. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to be, you got you to tune in. You got to tune in. Truth serum, is that class as old or what is it? <laughs> it's the truth serum. Why don't you take a sip of the truth serum? Hey. Better pray. <laughs> Don Lebatard. I think I'd like to know when I'm going to die because I sort of romanticize the idea of like living like you were dying yeah. when you're on a countdown clock. Imagine all the life experiences. Like I could go skydiving or Rocky Mountain climbing. <laughs> Stugats. Roy brings up a point though. On like, a like, Roy does bring shoe. up a point. Like you might be risking paralysis. And just the, that's totally a pretty trampled my bit. Yes. <laughs> just totally trampled my but bit. But Mike, what if God forbid it says you're going to die in like a guy. week? You're what welcome. if it says a week though? Like or two days or a month? I don't want to know that. Well, then you just love deeper and speak sweeter and yeah. give uh, forgiveness to those that you've been denying. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. Do you have more or is that it? No, thank you guys for letting me go through that smoothly. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. So how does this work for you creatively, though? Because I am I am curious whether this incarnation of your media career, you see the, the young people in these spaces, everybody's got a podcast. Why, why will yours be something that's different than everyone else's? Because, you know, I'm not one, Dan, to just say things or do things for cl clicks. You know, I'm, I'm really authentic about mine. I get to tell my whole story. I, I get to talk with great people and, and uh, you know, just live my lifestyle to the fullest in retirement. You know, I don't think nobody's enjoying their retirement more than Paul Pierce, the truth. Uh, and, and so I, I just want to be able to just, you know, a lot of things I want to get off my chest and a lot of things I want to give to the people sports wise, pop culture wise, uh, just pure authenticity. And, uh, you know, and, and like my nickname say, it's going to be the truth. And, and everybody's going to understand it, you know, and, and really hear from the horse's mouth. Dan, I'm gonna say this about Paul, right? Paul, I said this when you when you said Dwayne Wade, you made your comparison to Dwayne Wade's career, and everyone went crazy. I said, what Paul said is something that a lot of NBA players think, and I'm not even agreeing with you to be honest, but yeah. but I understood what you were saying was from the heart and the truth, because I know there are a lot of players who think that, but aren't brave enough to say it out loud. 
And so you asked about what we can expect from the Truth Lounge. I think you could expect Paul to speak his mind regardless of what kind of backlash he might get for it because he authentically feels that way. You, you know what? I, I, I'm not one to shy away from the booze uh, or, or the criticism. I think that my career and my life was built on that. You know, even when I, when I got drafted, I was projected number two. I got picked number 10. I, I get booed in different arenas. I got booed at the All-Star game in L.A. So, you know, <laughs> the, the, the crowd noise don't affect me. That, you know, as a matter of fact, it just – I thrive in chaos, I think. So, how did that, you know. How did that start? How like Because it seems like so many players nowadays are very, very sensitive to what people say about them on social media, what Skip Bayless said about them, what Stephen A. said about them. How did you develop, like, this thick skin of you don't care? I mean, I think growing up as, a, as an athlete, as a basketball player that I was trying to make it, I always read the criticism, and every time I read it, it made me better. <clears throat> you know, it made me work harder. It, it, it put it made me get an attitude, you know, like, all right, they think this about you, so I'm going to do this. So I think it carried over in life, you know, not only in sports, but in life. And it's like, hey, I'm going to brush this off and be better. You know, I use it to motivate me, you know. And so it's just gotten to the point to where, you know, I thrive in it. I welcome it. Uh, somebody's got to wear the black hat. I mean, you know, everybody can't ride off in the, on the white horse you know somebody's <laughs> got to be the bad guy and i don't mind that well paul i hope i hope you're being prodded into places where you're telling some of the more honest stories because i want to know what's the best of the memories for example kevin garnett is a world class trash talker who has an assortment of clashes in his past you're very close to him is yeah. there one above all others that is the story that gets told because it's the impressive one about kevin garnett had 20 years running where he talked more than anybody in the league <laughs> you know what there's certain things i will not ask kevin you know there's certain trash talk moments that to this day i don't know and i will not ask him and uh that went kind of crazy <laughs> <laughs> too personal too personal I, I promise you i do not know the answer to like a couple of them that was rumored to be said in the trash talk uh and I don't want to know. And so, but there's a lot of stories that in the locker room and on the court that have been really good. And uh, I'm going to save it for the podcast. So, so make sure y'all tune hey, in. Oh, he's that. embargoing it. Yeah. He is embargoing it. Okay. We do everything right now, y'all. Y'all y'all, y'all sneaky. Y'all think y'all slick. Yeah, we'd, we'd like, tune we'd, in. Yeah, we'd like so, to share. We'd like to share with yeah. your stories. We don't want you to have them for yourself. We're media <laughs> partners now, Paul. That's the way no. that works. You share it over here. We share it over there. You scratch my back. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't talk about the poop wheelchair. You know, <laughs> no. Hey, when you put your hand, when y'all come in on Truth Lounge, I got a book. It's called The Truth Chronicles. <laughs> and you got to put your hand on it and, and look. Okay. Okay. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing. All right. The well, truth. then tell me one of the most memorable Heat Celtics stories that people don't know. These are this was the rivalry of our time over a decade. You fighting? Uh -huh. They they built their team to beat your team. I don't even know how you feel about Ray Allen right now today because he went over to their team. Like, what are what's the greatest truth that can be told here of something that hasn't been heard? All right. This is look. All right. Look. This is what I did here, and this is about Ray Allen. And I'm not even sure if this is true. In game, we played Miami game. I think it was either game two or game five in Miami. Before the series was over, I heard Ray Allen was already looking for houses in Miami. Oh, wow. I heard, I, I'm not sure how true that is. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, ain't that crazy? During the series. When did you hear it, though? I heard it a little later, like maybe that summer. Okay. I heard that he was already looking for houses during the middle of the series while we're in Miami, while we're trying to beat them to go to the championship. I did hear that. That's I don't think nobody heard that. That's wild. I hadn't heard that one for sure. Well, I, I and I imagine somewhere in there because of, you know, explain to me what the rivalry uh -huh. what the rivalry means from a personal place when as you describe that all these years later you tell that story because it feels like a betrayal to you. Yeah, it did. It did feel like a betrayal, man. You know when you when you when you go to war with your brothers and, and you do family stuff with them and their kids and your wives get along and you in their house and then next thing you know 
you go to the team that we're trying to beat and you don't even tell us or warn us or give us a phone call and you just jump shit without even like no goodbyes, no hugs or nothing. That did feel like a betrayal. You know what I'm saying? That's almost like your girl going to your best friend. And then, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that ain't that ain't cool. That wasn't cool. At least tell them, give me a proper break off. You, you know what I'm saying? So it, it did feel like a betrayal. And so that's why for a lot of years, we didn't talk to Ray or we didn't address him and you know, it, it was just, it was tension. You know, it was tension every time we played them because I just felt like if you brothers, you're supposed to acknowledge one another where you like to or not and, and be like, look, I ain't feeling what happened with the team. I ain't feeling what's happening with management. They're not giving me my money. I'm not starting no more, whatever it is. You, you, the bonding we created in the locker room on and off the court, that's something you can talk to us about. Whatever you got with the management and, and, and and the ownership and Danny Ainge and Doc, that's between y'all. But with your brothers, we in the locker with every day, we deserve better than that. And that's why it was a lot of tension. And me and Ray was able to clear that up like some years later. We, As a matter of fact, how we cleared it up, we had an exhibition game in China. And I learned that Ray was there. And I just said, you know what, let me go holler at him. And that's when we kind of cleared the air. And I told him my, my truth and how I felt about it. And then we've been cool since then. It's interesting that you say that because I, you don't strike me as the type that would get hurt very often by sports business being cold, right? Like I, my guess is that you got that's a veteran team there. They know how cold that business is. That to hear the hurt in your voice on that one is interesting when you're just talking about we cared about winning the championship and we went from somebody who played for us and was helping our businesses and our families and our economies and our place in Boston and now he's yeah. against us and we didn't even get to say goodbye the way we wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, come on. I mean, that 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 right there. Like I said, the stuff that we went through, you got to give me a goodbye. Give me a hug or a dap or something. You know, I know how cold the business is. Yeah, you can leave a free agent, but it's just certain respect levels that you have amongst, you know, players like me, Ray, and Kevin. You know, it's just certain respect levels to this. You know, I would have never been, I would have been like, look, y'all, hey, man, I, I'm not – Feeling it over here no more. They're not giving me the money I want. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm about to go over here, which I think, you know, I'm going to talk to my family. It's a lot of things that's going to come in with it. And, and so, you know, I just think it's a respect level. And, I, and we've all felt disrespected. Dan, you know, on that note, I do have something I want to ask Paul that I've been thinking of for a long time. And I never, I never brought it up to him, but I have been hurt by it. Uh, you know, when I ran American Ninja Warrior the second time, Paul was there, right? Oh. <laughs> so we're, oh. we all show up. We're watching the ninjas go through it. And Paul looks at me and he says, $500, you can't go through the first obstacle. I said, you're on. And then <laughs> Michelle said, I'll put in another. Michelle Beto said, I'll put another 500 on it. Then a couple more people went and failed. And Paul says, I'll give you $10,000 if you do this. And so at that point, I said, okay, let me go stretch. Because now it went from, oh, you know, a little bit of money to, man, I could, this could, this is life changing for me. I don't make money like that. So 10000 let's do this. Paul, I, I got up on the stage and I looked at you. I didn't even look at the camera. I looked at you and I had up 10 fingers. Like, 10? You sure about this? And you said yes. And I ran through it. And I got so excited about the money because I was running great through it that I did not pay attention to the last step, and I fell in the water. You was almost there, dog. You was right there. I was actually pulling for you. I was actually pulling for you. Boom, boom. Flat, ah! That wasn't, that wasn't the one. That's that was the, the first, first one. one. That That's is the, the most viewed clip in American Ninja history. Oh, yeah. This is the. I didn't know there was a second there story was, to there this. There was a second one in L.A. This one was in Miami, the one in L.A. But you're saying you failed the second time? Why have I never seen the video of the second time? Paul that Pierce. That wasn't it. That wasn't the one. You no, know, that wasn't the one. The you one, choked is what you're saying. I, absolutely, because I was thinking about the money. Because I looked at Paul and I said, oh, it's about to happen now. I'm like going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And I missed the last step because I was thinking about what I'm gonna do with the money. To be honest with you, I was like, should oh, I buy, nah, uh, put nah, a down nah. payment on a car? Da, da, da. And I just I saw the rope. I was like, I gotta jump. And I ended up oh, skipping no. that last That's step. Hard. Now, Paul, at any point during my run, did you actually believe that I was gonna do it? I, I you know what? I saw the other contestants, and you know, they were some pretty good athletes in there. I mean, and you know, not to take anything away from your athleticism, but I'm looking at their build. And your build, 
and they didn't do it, I was like, ah, uh, this is going to be tough. All right. Amin just wanted to, to tell glory day stories yeah, about man. himself there and ended the interview with total self-involvement. Uh, Paul, <laughs> the Truth Lounge, uh, you will tell your gambling stories. You will tell your, your, your deep, dirty NBA secrets, uh, and people will have to swear on the truth serum in the Bible that they're there to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Correct? True. All right. We can do that. Truth in the modern age of media. He's right here. Thank you, uh, Paul. It's good to be in business together. I'm looking forward to what uh, what comes from this. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for me. Thanks, Paul. Be warned. The ones who pick up a refreshingly cold drink from McDonald's and people see just how refreshingly cold that drink from McDonald's is, you may create drink envy because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. For a morning brew that really creates a stir, get any size iced coffee, including caramel and French vanilla, for just 99 cents before 11 a.m. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.